kiss and say, baby, won't you be my girl? Would you meet me at the Friday dance and give romance a whirl? Let's take a chance, our happiness say, baby, won't you be my girl? Won't you be my girl? I said, baby, won't you be my girl? Um, I'm not sure if we're allowed to get spicy with this, but I'm gonna do it. I don't know, uh, it's as far as my thinking goes here. Uh, I'm just picking a size. I'm gonna go 15, so yes, yeah, 60 is good. 60 is bad. All right, so we have an open by Matt Ryan with three piece. First one is, okay, wow, the most playable hand. We have had in a while. Brian's through betting small though. Probably should just fold. Um, let's see, Matt folds a lot of hands when we re-raise. Um, all right, I'm gonna stick to being disciplined here and just uh, fold this hand. I just, I really thought Drew was cooking up something pretty larcenous over there. Um, I'm gonna be folding to this three bet. I'm just gonna note for the meta that I didn't say anything before opening this hand. So the next time I'm near top of range, even if I have something I wanna say about the dynamic, I'm probably just gonna open and not say anything. Yeah, get out of here, bro. <laughs> Show me something bad, put me on tilt. <laughs> huh? Show me something bad. Put me on tilt. I can't hear anything. Then why do you keep saying huh? No, I actually can't though. I'm I'm in the hypnotized zone. In the zone. Um, I think we're only ever flatting here. I'm not gonna three bet, but I don't wanna call too quickly because um, Matt is good enough to, and he's been on this show before. All right, Matt open, Ryan call, and I'm going to fold. This is definitely a three better fold scenario, but for 10 more bucks, this hand has decent playability. I don't really need, think it's worth inflating the pot with this hand out of position, so I'm just gonna make the call. And for that reason right there is why I didn't three bet. If it comes, it comes, but basically impossible to play out of position like this. So I'm gonna check. I was really hoping that Ryan would three-bet me this hand because it just would have been so perfect for him to three-bet me two hands in a row, find the four-bet after folding. Uh, but you can't always get what you want. And I, I don't think um, it would have worked super well against anybody else besides him, just wouldn't look as spewy. Uh, obviously reasonable, positions to flat from button and big blind. This is gonna be probably one of the most common three, uh, three way sort of formations we'll find ourselves in. And ace three three uh, is a board that definitely favors my range, but I think that Cato is flatting and defending his big blind so wide. He showed down queen four off in a previous hand. I don't remember who the opener was, so like I'm not sure what the positions were, but 
The fact that he had that hand, I think, shows he's defending pretty wide. And so he's going to have some threes here, which is problematic for uh, the typical range analysis, I guess. We are three ways, and I am out of position, and it is two-tone. So even though this board would typically be reasonably high frequency if it were, say, rainbow and heads up, I think that it's okay to not see bet as high of a frequency. And if I'm not see betting as high of a frequency, I think this hand functions very well as a check. Um, so that's what I'm gonna start with. There's a lot of things going on in my head, but one is that Kato is just dead. He's, he's wrecked. I'm thinking of this like it's a heads up pot, like out of position versus in position flat. I think that I do have enough aces. Basically, I'm gonna bet to protect my hand um, against and get value from maybe maybe king queen with a heart or you know king 10 of diamonds. A, a bunch of things have to continue. I'm talking about Matt. Um, you know, and then Kato may have a bunch of flush draws, but either way, I'm very likely getting value and protecting what is very possibly the best hand right now. This is just a clear fold. So there's 50 in the pot and Ryan bets 25. I think this is a board that he'll stab a fair bit in position. Uh, because, you know, even though Kato can have some 3x, both my and Ryan's ace-x range probably dominates Kato's, and the fact that he has position lets him bet a little more freely than, um, than me. But with this holding, I'm not checking to do anything other than check call. Um, I think the only thing to sort of prepare for here is for future runouts and deciding like what sizes and um, what sort of streets I may call or fold on. I don't think the churn card really impacts the decision that as much as the sizing, but I'm always calling one, usually calling two, probably rarely if ever calling three unimproved here, um, but obviously a call here. Cool. I'm gonna check range on this card. All right, so I was going to take back everything I said on the flop and just say that I'm fucked. Um, but now I'm not. Hopefully, and this is why my mind actually changed after he called, that I was realizing that, okay, Matt knows me and there's levels going on where we're aware of each other's play style to a large extent. And I think he knows I overblast perhaps. So I could see him check calling a lot of stuff. But like I said, he does have a lot of hands that have to continue. If we're heads up, multi-way, he could probably pull more. I don't know, either way, obviously I have to bet. I'm just deciding on what size to go. I'm truly thinking out loud here because I, I don't know what, what, what I'm supposed to do. Um, I think I just need to cover my mouth and keep, keep hide, hide my lips from him, but definitely keep blasting. I reckon big, just make him pay with aces and if he has hearts ever, All right, so 100 in the pot, Ryan bets 60. I think this is pretty reasonable with a lot of his ace -X, although I think he'll check back some. Uh, there's still some pretty strong ace -X that I can mix here as check calls on flop. And I have a couple of slow plays as well. I have sevens probably in full in my range here. I don't think we can release yet against this size. Um, I almost would have preferred a heart to come out, but I think this is fine. He should find a lot of pretty natural double barrels here, like heart draws, um, hands that pick up gutters. Um, unsure how he treats 7x, he may feel it's too strong to barrel as a bluff. He may just check it back. Um, but yeah, I think he's gonna find enough, like, just random hands here that we have to peel at least one more. I do worry that I end up on river a little bit capped, but at the same time, like I can still have some slow plays that get there. So I, I'm not too concerned about it and we'll probably just have to check fold against um, 
like big river sizes. So I think it's kind of important to at least talk about my range here and whether I would ever have leads. I think I have a couple uh, of very strong hands that would get here, but maybe more importantly than that, I have some weak ASX that would get here and that is now a boat, obviously. And the question is, would I lead those cards? Well, would I lead those hands on this card? hands like a seven, would I lead? I think the answer is probably no. I don't think I need to lead any of those hands because every ace in his range is still gonna feel comfortable to bet. So my super monsters, like if I just have quad threes here, uh, if I just have um, a seven here, he's still gonna do the betting for me when he has it. And if I lead, it's pretty hard for him to rebluff. So my value doesn't really like leading, I don't think. And therefore, I definitely don't want to lead just bluffs or just my medium strength sort of showdown. Now, the problem with the spy is I just probably don't win the pot that often, even though the ace makes it technically that there are fewer combos of ace-x, but I think that overall, he's still going to have it more often than not. And the good thing about this run out is that I think queens can now very comfortably, I think, check fold against larger sizes because I can so easily have an ace getting here that I don't think he's as incentivized to bluff as he would be on more of a brick run out. So I'm gonna check and evaluate the sizing and if there's an, if there's just anything changes, but most likely check folding to a big size. All right, so this whole hand, I've been a fraud. In fact, most of this show. I'm acting like I think through poker at a level that I don't normally think it through. No, I mean, I am articulating things that normally I'm just clicking buttons and doing. So it's a weird thing that, um, but I don't want to act like I know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't have a clue. This river's really interesting because obviously the card I was saying I hope he had the most now beats us on, on the uh, on the riv. So um, I'm just deciding if I ever can get value from, if he, if he didn't believe us, right? And he had a hand like, he, he, he didn't believe us that, that we had an ace, then and he was, has anything from eights to kings. Is there enough of that that we get value from? Or a three, but I don't know what threes he would have besides ace three, which he really, I, I don't think has. We would have heard about it sooner. So I think I'm gonna bet for value. And then if we get raised, throw up. So we've seen this a couple times from Ryan. I don't remember a lot of the details of the spots where he sized kind of like this um, on a river, but I think that it's probably a size designed to target hands very similar to what I have. If he has an ace and he knows that I have a fair bit of ace X here, uh, he, he can't get value from those. So he has to target a very weak part of my range. Now, Ryan's, um, you know, becoming a very accomplished player. And so I think that he's probably capable of finding some bluffs for this size. The question is like, does he really find enough? So there's 220 in the pot and he bets 50. So I have to call 50 into 270. It gives me almost five and a half to one. I mean, what does that mean? I only have to be good like 15% of the time or something like that. Um, I'm trying to think if blockers are going to matter at all here. Um, I think that hearts are probably a somewhat natural bluff just because it gives you a clear barrel and a clear sort of demarking line for what's value and what isn't. I don't have a heart, so I guess that's good. I think that the next important thing would be, uh, I guess blocking more of the combos of ace-x that he can get here with, which queens probably doesn't, because I think Ryan will three bet those pre and play uh, even. Yeah, I mean, it's just not blocking it because they're not in their pre. So that's uh, kind of a tick against calling here. Um, 
the last thing I would probably look at here is sort of where am I in my range. While I do get here with some ASX that I already mentioned and quad threes, <laughs> there's probably not that many combos. It's still probably a high frequency C bet with most decent ASAX. And so we're looking at calling with weak ASAX and then do I have to call with any pocket pairs to this size? And I think the answer is probably yes. I'm supposed to call against this size at a pretty high frequency. Although who knows, maybe I'm constructing my ranges wrong here and I'm getting here with too many pocket pairs. But I think that given how many pocket pairs I can have and how many of them I can check the flop with, picking the second best one that I show up here with um, is pretty reasonable. So yeah, we're go I mean, we're gonna lose this hand at a very high frequency, but I think we're probably still supposed to call. Call. <laughs> That's fucking gross. <laughs> I'm gonna like to talk myself out of a call. Uh, I was considering it, but Jeremiah's pretty tough and shutting him out of these pots is pretty nice. So we are going to like to go 12X. We can go either way with this. I think I'd be more inclined to check our middling pocket pairs like tens and jacks. Let's go 50. I do think I'm still ahead of some of his three bet candidates, you know, his suited connectors. She really shouldn't have a lot of jack x in range. We get to apply some pressure now to a7, which is really good for us, pocket eights, pocket nines. If we're against a queen, this obviously sucks, um, but I don't think we can fold, so. There are a lot of hands in our range that would go bet bet, including ace king. The problem is I missized the turn. I think we just have to go for it now. Uh, it's just too good of a river card for us. All in. I think this is going to be either just close my eyes and call or fold. I don't actually expect to be good here all that often, but I actually still might end up calling. Garbage. Um, here we have a uh, easy open. Fun fact, big pun was 700 pounds when he died. All right, so Ryan with the open. Get to play a hand. This is oh, get to play a hand. We get to play a hand. All right, this is cool. I don't want to play this hand. All right. Uh, yeah, we gotta come in with the three piece. Fifty-five. No need to get involved with this one. All right, so I obviously can't hear anything Drew's saying, but I saw him like jerk when he looked at his hand, and I think he's excited to three bet me again on the button, this guy. Last time, turned out I wrecked him, he told me on a little break, and correctly folded. Anyway, all this is besides the point. I'm continuing, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't even know what, I don't even have a four betting range I don't think today, anyway, <laughs> so I'm calling. Here, like before, I'm always checking the imposition razor. Wow, I was actually expecting to see an ace and a king on this flop. Nine high, this is weird. But I guess I continue with uh, everything, really. Um, what did we use? 3 bet, 55, 120, something. So, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and hit him with that 30 ish. Um, 120. That 40 bucks. I'm looking at the pause and think how much is in there. 120, any bet, 30, 40. What a hack size bet. You bet third pot, like a, like the fraud he is. Um, I, I want to check raise, but I don't know what hands of his continue unless I min click and just insult him, which maybe I will do, and then I'll have to continue with like a bunch of random overs. I'm just gonna insult the shit out of him and go 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 to go to seventy. Eighty is the bet. Eighty. Ten more. Oh yeah, I'm shot. 
for it. All right. So he re raises, huh? Interesting board for it. Um, so what do we got here? Some backdoor check raises, maybe? Or if he would fast play here. Hmm. So he's probably just call, right? Mid click. Oh, that's funny. You can't even count to a mid click. This guy's funny. All right. Yep. Let's do it. Okay, so like I said, uh, our bet by min click insulting him, we force him. One, he and I were talking about doing this yesterday, a strategy talk. We're talking about min clicking people, um, you know, out of position and what it does, the dynamic of the hand. And, and uh, a lot of times he's too good for this, but it'll put them in a spot where they're like, yo, sc screw you, uh, you know, and then they'll be like, like not prone to fold as much as they ought to. I, I don't know. I don't know if I can get away with it again. I'm thinking, I'm just debating if, if I should bet or check right now. I, I for sure think I, I most of the time have the best hand. I, I, although I don't think if I don't have the best hand, I would have heard about on the flop necessarily because I don't, I don't think he has many flop three bets. Um, so, I don't think I can get value again from the same over as I was like targeting on the flop. I better check and let him try to get out of line and then on river if he checks back turn, I'll, I'll bet <clears throat> most rivers. Check. All right, check, min raise, check, check. This is like way above my pay grade. Um, what do we do here? So I think the Normal play is gonna be versus this action to like bet turn all the time with like so many hands. Like a third pop, then again, I got these tournament instincts as a cash game, it's a little different. What do we got out there, two something? Um, coming up 253, check raise, check. Oh my gosh, if he's trying to get the double check raise on me, that's epic, I might just have to give it to him if he does. Uh, yeah, I think we got a bet here though, so. What do we want to do? I guess, let's see. I think I'm gonna bet about 250. I think I'm gonna bet, yeah, uh, probably about, uh, hmm, what does it call? I think I'm gonna go about half pot here. Yeah, like 125. What do we got? Yeah. 125 is a bet. All right, well, I brought myself into the woods and now I gotta navigate it. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think of what, what hands he'd play like this. I know that he's three betting, so his weaker three bets that, that have equity are like, you know, wheels, suited wheels, ace, ace nine, king nine he's supposed to have, um, and better overs, but like I said, this is probably just him spazzing out maybe, or maybe I'm just, Screwed all along. Um, so I think our plan, which we maybe fucked up by, by check raising flop and then checking turn was my optimistic theory was that I'd get him, force him to continue with random shit, like ace, four, ace, five, overs, you know, king, 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 jack suited, and then by checking turn, make him bet and call. So I guess the best way to get the most money, if I'm going with that, I'm going with my my theory that OJ did it. I gotta check and then let him spaz. Hmm. All right, so. I'm not really sure what he has, honestly. The check min raise is so friggin' funny, dude. And then check call, so maybe he, no, I mean, does he think I fold overs when he check min raises flop and then goes into a pot control, just check call with a nine? 
probably just check calling sevens, eights. Unless he doesn't want to decide and get pressure on the turn sometimes. Does he have... Does he think I'm going to bluff? If he does think I'm going to bluff and he's got a bluff catcher, I should go big. Um, hmm. Definitely got a bet. Now we got to figure out sizing. So about 250-ish, whatever. We bet the 125, so we got about 500 out there. I got about 6, 15. If I call his check raise on flop, I'm strong enough to for him to continue to value bet. So I think he's just got like a pot control type of hand. So I think I should just go max pressure. Um, actually, I'm gonna bet. So we got about five out there. I think I'm just going to. Yeah, I think I'm gonna bet about the size of the pot. I wonder how he interprets a jam versus most of my chip bet. All right. I think we are going to. Yeah, I think we're just going to put it all in actually. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the play. All in. What a piece of shit. I don't know how much this is. Can you, um, five, six, 15. So we overbet the river. All right. I might have fucked myself. I was thinking while he was acting that. So the hands that I lose to are mostly just over pairs, right? But Drew's good enough to be three betting. Ace four, ace five. There's four combos of each of those that I don't know though if he would do it. Like he probably would. Because because I know that he knows that when I do the min click thing on the flop, that I'm often doing that as a trick to try to get the showdown, right? And I know that he, he I know that he knows that I use it that way. Fuck, I'm fucking myself. I brought us in the woods and now I don't know how to get out. Fuck. I'm probably gonna call, but I, I just wanna really think through like what bluffs. Um, cause, cause obviously we're bluff catching at this point. Um, I looked at him and he smiled. So that's like a bit of a live read and he's my friend. So I'm calling. Call. call. No! Oh. Fuck you. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> 6.15. Uh, my smile made you call? Huh? My smile made you call? Yeah, you were listening? Yeah, yeah. yeah you like looked you at me and I was like... That oh, is your smile made me call. You, you looked at me and it made me I smile. said that out loud. It's like doing so good. Your smile. I, I, had you on oh. I was like trying to not do anything but that last look. And I was leveling myself. I was like, yo, he knows that I know that he, that like I do that quick back trick. Yeah, yeah to get to showdown and shit. I was saying all that. Oh man, it was. That's funny. Yeah. All right. No Jack. We pick up garbage. There you go. All right. Ooh. Okay. We can play again. We're gonna raise this one up. Fifteen. All right. I have a. Very nice hand on the button. I'm more than happy to three bet. The question is how much. I've been doing around 50, 55 all day, so I think I'm just gonna stick with that. 55. So we pick up uh, king queen offsuit. Um, 
<sighs> we can be four betting if we really want to, but uh, again, we have no fold equity against Poker Beast because he's going to call any four bet um, unless I do a ridiculously large sizing, in which case I'm only getting called by better. And then I have to navigate post out of position potentially against two people. Um, obviously, they both have as of right now on cap ranges. So um, I'm just going to fold and uh, continue being a knit. All right, three piece and I have, I'm calling this one for sure. So we're gonna see a flop. All right, so we have some things that can happen here. I imagine he's gonna be betting a lot of these flops. I am, hmm, I think I'm, um, yeah, we're gonna start with a check. We're gonna start with a check, but I might do some stuff on the flap, we'll see. Check. I have some options here. I'm inclined to want to bet. I could also check, play a little sneaky. Maybe he'll bet on the turn. Because if he doesn't have an ace, he's probably not going to be that interested in this hand. But I always like to default on aggression. I always like to put money in the pot. So, 75. All right. What do we got? One, 20, 75. Bigger side. I'm supposed to fold more here. But I would have loved to see it smaller. Call, pick up the heart, four, six on turn, check raise. Get a little sexy, but I guess maybe I'll actually just fold to this bigger size bet. Yeah. So <laughs> Kato's been opening like probably 50% of the pots so far. And uh, card distribution over a small sample can obviously let this happen. He did just flash tens, but yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna kind of keep with the plan of applying pressure with any reasonable preflop hands I can. But I think that based on the frequencies of three bets from behind me, we can just flat here. And um, yeah, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to smash this one. Uh, this is a hand here. Definitely, I can, I can open on the button. Not sure if I want to call a low jack open, but Kato's. I feel it's kind of considering maybe like taking a stand, playing you know playing this hand against Kato, heads up in position. Um, now, Matt here calls. I don't know if that incentivizes me to call here as well. Uh, I was planning to fold, but something something pot odds. Something something pot odds. Cool. This crap. All right, so we have an open call, call. Ugh, can't you be suited, it's so annoying. I wanna be in here. Playing out of position is never fun, but I have a pretty good hand. I've Feel like I have some serious eyes looking at me right now though. But I'm gonna continue to bet. I have quite a few ways to make a really powerful hand. So I'm just gonna bet about a half size pot bet, 20. 20 is bet. Okay, flat bottom pair. 
and a gut shot. No clubs, unfortunately. Um, but I think we're just gonna call and reevaluate a turn. Dude. 